say what you do. I that power of the Holy Spirit and enable us to forsake our sin evil ways and serve you a newness of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty and Merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Recognizing that God has forgiven us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, has died for us, let us adore him, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You have dealt well with your servants, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. Your word is a lamb to our feet. Shall we stand for the psalm? Psalm 1, 2, 4. Page 25. Page 
please be seated. The only reading for this service is taken from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 11. Nehemiah, chapter 2, starting at verse 11. I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I stayed out during the night with a few men. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. At night, I went out through the valley gate toward the Jakar well and the Dong gate, examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount to go to get through. So I went up the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing. Because as yet, I had said nothing to the Jews or the priests or nobles or officials, or any others, who would be doing the work. Then I said to them, you see the trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been burned with fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God upon me and what the king had said to me. They replied, Let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. But when Sambalat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite, Ammonite official and Geshem, the Arab, heard about it. They mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you are doing? They, say, they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them by saying, The God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, we start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. This is the word of the Lord. The hymn for Salmon. God is building the people of God is building the people of power. Page 39, item number 18.
before you who have done it again for us, giving us the wonderful opportunity to see this day and to arrive at our venue safely. Thank you for our venue and our host. Thank you for this hour of meditation, meeting with you. I receive from you. Lord, forgive what we've been in the past and make us what you want us to be the days ahead of us. Bless us with your word of wisdom and power. Give us hearing ears, willing wills, and responsive hearts to your words. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We cannot thank God enough for this wonderful opportunity of arriving near with Sibley from different parts of this country. We give him all the honor and glory forever and ever in Jesus' name. We use this opportunity to appreciate the primates of our church who has given us this opportunity to share this word with us this evening. The theme for this general synod is very appropriate. And it's that command that must be obeyed. Arise and build. In this context, the primate of our church added God's mandate for God's people in a broken world. The story of Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem is a very fascinating and challenging one for leaders or persons who are facing very serious challenges or circumstances in life. It can serve as a guide to those who want to overcome Their conditions, despite all odds. I therefore consider this theme of our General Synod as an urgent declaration by the Primate of our Church for urgent action. I can easily link it with his first declaration titled, The Decade of the Reign of God. We live in a world that is terribly battered by evil at various levels, broken lives, broken relationships, broken families, broken countries, and even broken church groups. 
Nehemiah called his people to rise and build a broken wall of the Jerusalem city. Ours is a very complicated situation. That is, to build a broken world. The big question is, where do we begin? Broken world? Do we begin from Russia? Do we begin from where? Ukraine? Let's begin from our home, Nigeria. From the news that fit us in Delhi, in this country, we are in no doubt in a country that is broken for decades now. And I can confidently say since 1966 when the soldiers struck and had their way for many, many, many years. Did their thing. And they are still doing their thing. Those people are still in power. They are still there. Then the civilians, whether they are soldier, civilian, or real civilians, is another case. They are there doing their thing. And so governance in Nigeria has become a criminal enterprise, as some people say. Governance has become a criminal enterprise in Nigeria. Corruption, they say, has taken, has been elevated and grounded by past administrations. Therefore, Nigeria is like a sinking ship with passengers, with drunken sailors. Rudas are operating at subhuman level. The rudas of the ship are operating at subhuman level. There is this issue of public morality and trust deficit. Whom do you trust? Hmm. In Nigeria, there is a reign of impunity, impunity over the years. That's what they call state capture. And they call themselves owners of Nigeria. I'm going back to 1966. Owners of Nigeria. We hear this and we begin to wonder, they mean it? The owners of Nigeria. I don't have the time to go into that. Many of you know what I'm talking about. They and their allies are the ones who have refused that the promises we breathe. They are the ones responsible for all you theft, all you block, name it. They have so much money to spend, so much money they have piled up in and outside Nigeria. The question is, what are they going to do with that? Both the federal and the state levels, we find these people. They are all over the place. The immediate past government has borrowed so much that we are told that 90% of Nigerian revenue is used in servicing debt. Who will believe that? But that's the truth. People's votes are no more counting, except in few situations. Hence a situation where the law courts now determine who wins the election. Our schools, institutions of learning, hospitals are all battered. Our economy is down there. It's all bad, in bad shape. Citizens are going through untold hardship. Never experienced before in this country. Let me leave the issue of Nigeria here. Since there is going to be an expositor who will also apply the theme. 
And now he's be equal to the task. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, and verse 1, gives us the background of our text. Nehemiah, chapter 1, from verse 1b. We may not have time to read us, but you may jot it down. It gives us the background. It came to pass in the month of Jezreel, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brothers or brethren, came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors are left, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. That's the background to this command. Arise and build. Nehemiah had met Hanani and others heard the bad news about Jerusalem, sat down and wept and mourned for his city for many days, fasting and praying and seeking the face of God of heaven. If you read verse, verses 5 to 11, you see the confessions he made. Very deep con confessions that moved God. The God of heaven answered him, gave him wisdom about what to do. He got the king's ears and permission. He traveled to Jerusalem. He gathered the elders of the Jews together. He shared his burden for building the walls. He said to them, let us arise and build. Let us arise and build. The points to note here is that Nehemiah identified with the problem. He spent quality time in prayer. He approached a key person, the king, for permission to travel. He evaluated the site in Jerusalem when he got there. He inspired the people by encouraging them with the encouraging words of wisdom. He also organized them and got them working. The secrets of their success were they gave full commitment to the work they were to do and the Bible says, for the people had a mind to work. Chapter 2, verse 6. They gave their time of rest. They sacrificed their time of leisure and comfort to do the work. They worked in shifts to keep the enemy away. They worked together as a team. Notice the we. We, we, in verses 6, 9, and 21. They work together as a team. They employed a unique method. They assigned work to family groups. Chapter 3. In every age. When the chips are down, 
God will always choose a remnant to restore the law and order in the land. The work of rebuilding broken walls of Jerusalem was placed on the shoulders of Nehemiah. He took the task and challenge with every sense of responsibility and commitment. He restored the dignity and glory of the city after about 52 days. This is the kind of spirit we ought to have when doing God's work. We shall accomplish the task of healing or fixing a broken country or even a broken world by allowing God's reign on earth. God's mandate to the church through the promise of our church is arise and build a broken world. The task before the church is not its credibility but to show its relevance. That's what John Stott said long ago. I take that again. The task before the church is not its credibility but to show its relevance. That is what we are called to do. Let me quickly relate to this command to what we have in Isaiah chapter 60. If you go with me to Isaiah chapter 60, you see what happened there. Another command. We always read it. And we apply it to our situation. What does it say? Arise! Shine! For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift your eyes all around, and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side, and the rest of them. I made my point. Arise and do what? And shine. Why? For the light, your light has come. That's the command. From the commander in chief of the heavens and the earth, arise and shine. That is one other way of interpreting this mandate. Arise and shine. Why? For the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And then there is darkness to confront. But behold, the darkness shall never shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Bet and bet the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this is the point. This is the area to anchor. To relate what we are talking about. And then when you go to Isaiah chapter 61, you will see the follow-up. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. What is that light? Isaiah 61 verse 1 answers you, answers us. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good 
tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Hmm. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Hallelujah. This God is wonderful. He makes things so easy for those who want to understand. Arise and shine for your light has come. Here it says, tells you, the Spirit of God is upon me. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, then you can arise and shine. That is the catalyst. And when you read this 61, it gives you the picture of a broken society, a broken family, a broken world, a broken lives. And what to do about it? And until we surrender fully to the Lord, we can never do His will fully. The problem with the church is that what the Lord Jesus said about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength is not taken serious. Even though we read it, we, sh we shall hear it tomorrow. That's the problem. Many people love the Lord with all their mind, with all their strength, but the heart and soul is not there. It's not given. That's why we have people backsliding. That's why we have all kinds of people who are Christian names backsliding right and left. There's one terrible news about someone that is a pastor somewhere. Now he wants to be a traditional ruler and he will go to do traditional rites for seven days or something. And we see this on television. People who say they are church leaders. When they become traditional rulers or whatever, you see them going to the to shrines to worship. And there are many who are in the church who do double standard, hypocrisy of all sorts. Love for God must be total. You will know God first receive him secondly and then love him with everything in you if you love him with your mind and strength you will be doing all kind of wonderful things but you will easily backslide you can easily fall up the mark the mark that's why many people fall no matter how high they are you begin to wonder ah, why what happened there must be that full commitment of heart and soul, mind, and strength. We read it even this week from our daily fountain. When that is done, the Lord will take full control. Then we can love our neighbors as ourselves. All this hatred and the malice and blackmail and all this that is happening will not come. Because people will love you with genuine love. And I have tested that in my life. In northern Nigeria, when I became a Christian in the recent of the world in the 70s, I met men and women, foreigners and Nigerians from different parts of Nigeria. And they showed me genuine love. And I'm still enjoying that love till today. People from different parts of Nigeria. If I go to overseas, I have the same privilege. Or people who don't know where I'm coming from. Only that I come from Ojiriba. I come from Nigeria. They give us all we need. They feed us. They house us. They do everything for us. 
That is the love of God in action. So brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, let us arise and shine for our light has come. And that light is the Holy Spirit of God. Open your heart that the Holy Spirit will come. When he comes in, you will be a changed human being. And when you become a changed human being, that gives you the clue to all other challenges. You will live doing the will of God with eternity, with your view in eternity, eternity in view. Thank God for this opportunity. This is my last general synod with us. I've been in the journey for 43 years before I became a bishop by the grace of God. And within this month of my birth, I will bow out. And I give God all the glory for seeing us through. And one thing we have maintained, when we began our ministry in the diocese, we began with Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Following Jesus to the end. And as we end our journey, the theme of our last synod was, and still is, fulfilling my ministry in view of eternity. I have tried, I have not made it with my wife, to fulfill our ministry in view of eternity, we have nothing to show. No helicopter, not even a house yet, nothing, nothing. But we are looking at something that is more than all these things. Because we know that God will give us what he wants us to get. Amen? If we do the will of God, then we shall be happy for it. As Matthew chapter 25 from verse 31 says, when you have done what is here in Isaiah 61, that day the Lord Jesus will say, come my children, come my beloved. Yes, you visited me when I was sick. You gave me food when I was hungry. You gave me clothing when I was naked and the rest of them. There must be reward from God. He has promised that. The Holy Spirit will be the catalyst for action. And when we shine, the world will be a better place. Never will be a better place. Nigeria will be a better place. Our world will be a better place. All these uh, false doctrines and the rest of them will be a thing of the past. And the Lord will heal the church. The Lord will use us in fixing the society where we live in. It is my prayer that this theme of this General Synod will revolutionize our lives for real and not just doing it and then going to forget what we have done. Please, don't forget this theme. This theme will take us a long way. This theme will revolutionize Nigeria. This theme will bring a change in your personal life your family life, and in the community where you live. And so, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mandate for the church in this general synod. Help us to understand the mandate it's a command we cannot afford to ignore. Help us to obey the mandate to arise and shine. Arise and build. Arise and heal. Arise and fix. Arise and do whatever you are leading us to do wherever we find ourselves. Remove those things that are barriers to obeying this injunction, this command. Met us, O Lord, our God, 
and make us what you want us to be by the leading of the Holy Spirit. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Seven. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit.
collect. Lord God, you've taught us that anything we do without love is worth nothing. For whoever lives without love is currently dead before you. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond is, and for virtues, grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting God, give unto all the increase of faith, hope and love, and that we may obtain that which you promise. Make us the love that which you command through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all this works, give to your servant that faith which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Light in our darkness, Lord, we pray. And you are mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. In a moment of silence, let us thank God for journey mercy granted unto us. In this General Synod of the Children of Nigeria Anglican Communion, we are assembled in the Diocese of Newe. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Lord, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, my Lord. Jehovah. Jesus Christ, Ancient of days, we thank you for this privilege we have in you. First of all, that you have kept us alive and healthy to behold another general synod of the Church of Nigeria Anchor Communion. Gracious Father, we thank you for the leadership of our church, our primate, the most Reverend Henry Chukudum Ndokoba, and his wife Angela Ebele Ndokoba. We thank you for all that work with him in the primacy. We thank you for all the archbishops and bishops of our church and their wives. We thank you, Lord, for the clergy and wives. We thank you for the delegates, the laity, particularly those who have assembled here. We appreciate you. 
Thank you for the Dallas of Newe, our host. Thank you for the Bishop, NDBC, and Okamaka Obi. Thank you for members of the diocese and all that have been working to make sure that we are comfortable here. Thank you, Lord, for the officials of this convocation. Thank you because I know that this assembly will work out something gracious that will bring God the strength and the power to arise and build, particularly in a broken Nigeria. Lord, for all you have done and what you are doing and the more that you will do, to you be glory, honor, power, dominion, adoration, majesty, forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray that the Holy Spirit will guide and direct the proceedings of the meeting. Pray for protection and guidance, security. As heavens are already in charge, everything shall be done under the mighty hands of God and leading of the Holy Spirit. Pray for the growth and development of our church, the Church of Nigeria, that will be strong in carrying out the mandate of arising and building, particularly in this untoward generation and broken world. Pray that God will arise upon our nation, particularly in this challenging time of total system break, breakdown, political breakdown, breakdown of judicial system, breakdown of law and order. Ask God to fix Nigeria in his own way. That we have a nation where there is justice, where there is righteousness, equity, and fair fairness. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, commit your needs to God in prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace to bring before you with one accord our common supplications. And you promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life the grace To redeem the time, I wouldn't know whether choir has uh, any special number and why that is going on. We may take our offering. Choir? None? Okay, Gospel Band, are you there?
Okay. So, what is arranged to take offerings? Excellent Jehovah, marvelous Jehovah, there is no one greater than Jehovah, Lord divine. Excellent Jehovah, marvelous Jehovah, there is no one greater than Jehovah, Lord divine.
Seated why our Father in the Lord in God, His Grace, the Most Reverend Henry Jugudum Ndukoba, the Albisho Metropolitan, and the Primate of Horn Nigeria, comes to address us. Your Grace. The Lord be with you. With Jesus' joy, I welcome every one of us into God's presence and into this worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to thank the Almighty God for journey mercies granted to us from different parts of this country. We know that as we are here, there are some who are still on their way coming. God will bring them safely in the name of Jesus. And uh, we want to thank our Father in God, the Most Reverend Amos Mado, Baba Ujiriva, for the soul stirring word that you have brought to us. We requested him to preach at this opening service uh, in a way his validatory message to the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, which he has served all these years. And as he takes his bow, the Lord will go ahead of you. He will renew your strength day by day. You are still part of us. You are only retiring administratively. Pastorally and spiritually, you remain in active service. Amen. Praise God. We want to also thank our Father in God, the Right Reverend Dr. Epe, thank you for 
conducting the service. <laughs> you know, if it is not because of time, we would have continued the praise. <laughs> Amen. You know, he has his PhD in praise. Academically, he is a daughter of praise. Amen. God bless you. So when you see him dancing Divcon, he's demonstrating what he's made of. God bless you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, fathers in God, we are here for the 14th General Synod of the Church of Nigeria. Today, tomorrow, till Friday, will be packed full with activities. And when you look at your program, on page two, we see the activities that are lined up before us. For this evening, after this evening service, the archbishops and bishops will wait. Uh, we have a small time together before we go to our respective hotels. We also want to remind us that the program for tomorrow starts at 7 a.m. Uh, with Martins and Bible study. The province of Ondo will uh, take us in the morning service at 7 a.m. Our Bible expositor for this General Synod is the very Reverend Professor Chinedu Nebo. He will do the first exposition tomorrow. But on Thursday, on Thursday, we shall be having Holy Communion at 7 a.m. And during that 7 a.m. Holy Communion, the province of Lokoja will be conducting. And another father in God who, whose uh, last general synod with us will be in this synod will be bringing the word. And that is the most reverend Dr. Benjamin A. Kwashi, the Lord Bishop of Jos. He will be preaching on Thursday during the 7 o'clock Holy Communion service. The last Bible exposition will be on Friday uh, at 7 a.m., which will be taken by the very Reverend Professor Chinedu Nebo. And so, we continue to pray for God's presence and guidance in this General Synod. May I, on behalf of the Church of Nigeria, appreciate our host, the Diocese of Newi, heavily laid by the Right Reverend Amama Ndobisi Obi, we are indeed very grateful. And the clergy and the laity of the Diocese of Newi, we have been praying for you and we are looking forward to the great things that God will do. Thank you for your hospitality. God bless you. We also want to appreciate the province of the Niger, the Most Reverend Dr. Alex Ibezim and Mama Ibezim. Thank you with your bishops for hosting us. We are indeed very grateful. We welcome all our church officials and our Church of Nigeria officials and our diocesan officials. 
we are looking forward to the great fellowship that we all shall share in this synod. We thank the choir. Thank you for leading us. We also want to use this opportunity to welcome our brand new dean, the most reverend Dr. and Mama Blessing Eninda. Please let us welcome them. Playing his official role uh, during this synod. Uh, this will be his first assignment. God bless you. You are welcome. We also want to appreciate the immediate past uh, dean, the most Reverend Dr. Amama Boba Ali Lamido. We want to appreciate you. Thank you so much. We also want to welcome our brand new bishops, those who are for the first time leading their diocese officially to the Church of Nigeria meeting. Please welcome them. We also want to welcome the new Archbishop of Lagos and the new Archbishop of Kaduna. We welcome you with mamas. Please let us welcome them. God bless you. Thank you. On a sad note, 1st of September, as we are rejoicing that we are celebrating a new month, a bad news came to us that Mama Gladys, the wife of the Bishop of Benin, passed on to glory. We have been in touch with Bishop Emaswen, and it is such a hard time. We pray that the Lord will console and comfort him and his children, the Diocese of Benin, and indeed the Church of Nigeria. Death is something that comes to all. And unfortunately, nobody can tell who or when it will be. But our prayer is that each one of us will fulfill our days Amen. and we will fulfill God's purpose in our lives. Amen. Please keep this family in prayer and we ask that the comfort of the Lord will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Mama Kasiobi Oko lost her mother. The burial will be tomorrow at Lagos. Please keep these families in prayer. The Joshua generation the team of our young people who have been trained in movie making, in theater and art, theater arts. We spent time and resources to train them. And indeed, some of them are finding their place in the movie industry. They produced a movie which they will want us to, uh, to see in this uh, general synod. And um, we may not be able to take it this evening, but maybe tomorrow we will do so.
we may take it tomorrow by the grace of God um, to wind down after the day's work. So um, we want to thank them. Immediately after this service, the archbishops and bishops, please wait for a briefing and update. Mama uh, Fabemi, is it Fabemi or what? Mama Fabemi Owo lost her mother. Please also keep uh, keep these families in your prayers. And we pray that the Lord will comfort and console them in the name of Jesus Christ. So, okay. Over to you. Thank you. Sorry, we have to pray. Conclusion and benediction. Please, may we rise for the dosology. God, our Heavenly Father, we cannot thank you enough for this hour and your presence. Lord, we bless your name. We give you the glory. See us through the remaining hours of the evening and all the days we shall be here. Your presence will continue to be our portion. Lord, help us, fix us, heal us, that we may be a source of blessing to others, and to the world we live in. Bless, O oh Lord, the offerings we have given for the hearts that has given and make us veritable to see our hands. We pray by faith with thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. And to God's gracious mercy and keeping, we commit you, the Lord be, bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be and remain with you and yours, now and forever.
for withdrawal. Church of Nigeria Hymnal 131. Abide with me, fast force the even tide. Page 29, number 3. Page 29.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this service. Thank you for this wonderful evening. Thank you for the work you've begun, which you will finish well. Abide with us. Let your light shine upon us. And enable us to arise and build. Particularly in this untoward generation. May we not be among the wasted generation. Lord, keep us on the right track. That evil will not overcome us. Deliver our nation from captivity. And evil forces that besiege it. Set us free to declare the works of God in this land. Send us out in the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Okay. We are indeed very grateful. We want to welcome in our midst the right reverend Debo Thomas Babitin Elango, the Bishop of Cameroon, representing the